erect, erect the uterus tilts forward, slides down the shaft, and makes a cup that collects the sperm so it can go inside of the uterus. It's a process. The vaginal muscles, vagina muscles, start contracting and pulsating. And when they start contracting and pulsating, they start making colors. They start making notes, because anything that's pulsating is a frequency. It's an electromagnetic force. It creates a frequency, and frequencies can be measured. And you call those notes. You call it music. Like you tune pianos and all instruments based on the vibratory force of the pineal gland, 1440. You tune all instruments based on A, because that's the vibratory force of the pineal gland, 440. Everything is centered around this melanin issue here, and the pineal is where the melanin is made. So nonetheless, the, the vagina starts pulsating, making colors, and the penis shaft is in the vagina, and the pulsation goes up the, the shaft of the penis and starts pulsating back to the prostate, which tunes the prostate, puts the prostate on the same frequency of the uterus, which puts the sperm more in harmony with the egg. All this is like a dance, a symphonic dance. We get into the, the uterus, the fallopian tubes doing a dance, which they call the fertility dance, how the uterus moves around and about, and the Europeans call that a fertility dance, or distort that fertility dance and say it's a hoochie-coochie, or the belly dance, which is called the fanning of the flame, the creating of the flame, which is life, from your solar center, where your umbilical cord is attached to your mother's solar center, attached to your solar center, and that's why all African things are based on the solar system. The metric system is a solar-based measurement. The calendar is a solar-based. Everything comes from the solar system. Metra means solar. You're attached to the solar system of your mother. You're carried in the solar center of your mother. You follow me? So we get into this whole measurement and calculation based around solar cycles. But when you're into European culture, you're into lunar cycles, moon cycles. Oh, the moonlight's so pretty. Isn't it romantic? Everything is the moon, honeymoon. That's a lunar cycle. We're into a solar cycle. So we got to start getting on the right station to understand our reproductive system. Now, that's a healthy uterus and fallopian tubes. Now, this is one that has all types of fibroids in it. So you can see it. All types. I have all the types there. I have the pedunculated submucosal fibroid. That's the one that looks like a tree. This one looks like a tree. It has a stalk, it has branches, and it twists, and it turns. And when it twists and turns, its, it's, it's roots start clamping harder on the muscles, and that's what causes the pain. When, the, when these fibroids start moving on their own, they get the nourishment and when the, the blood comes through in the pulse. Like that. Blood is pulsed through your body. You call it your pulse. That's how it's going. It's going like that. And it starts pulsing in the tree of the fibroid, and the fibroid starts moving. And when it starts moving, it starts pain in the fiber of the uterus. And that's how you get this pains in the uterus from the pedunculated tumors. Remember, you had this waste. It irritates the fiber. The, once the fiber gets irritated, it gets inflamed. Once it gets inflamed, it heats up. Once it heats up, it cooks the flesh. Once it cooks the flesh, the flesh dies. Once it dies, it creates pus. The body says, I got this dead flesh, I got this pus, let me surround it. So it won't contaminate the rest of me. And that's when you get the shell, that's when you get the fibroid, the cyst encased in there tissue grows around it to protect it. Now, you, when it grows around it to protect it, it also traps veins in there. Now the veins can't get a clear flow of blood in and out, so the veins start ballooning, and so they burst. And that's what we call chocolate, when we used to open them up in the operating room, that you cut them open and it just be brown blood coming out. We call it chocolate then. Uh, when I used to do that sort of thing, I, I was in traditional medicine. Then we have subserious fibroid with fibers into the myometrum. These are the, the fibers itself. It grows like a tree, and the fibers grow into the fibers of the uterus and the mesoderm. It grows right in there and starts strangling the blood supply to the very section of the uterus, and that section dies. So what we're trying to do is understand that this condition can be corrected by correcting the diet, 
going back to eating foods in their natural state to keep you in your natural state, going back to using real medicine, herbs, not that synthetic dirt which the Europeans peddle as medicine, the Tylenol which decreases the blood supply to the pelvic girdle and to the uterus. Aspirin does the same thing. Sedatives cause cysts and tumors. All those neuroleptics cause nerve damage, which stops the correct response between the brain and the body. Neuroleptics, tranquilizers, sedatives. You've heard them before, Prozac, things of that sort we use today. But nonetheless, we have the firm, hard, calcified fibroid. That's there. And so it's not able to maintain temperature. So it's colder than the rest of the temperature rest of the, of the uterus. Now, because it's colder, the uterus doesn't have the right temperature in that area to get the proper blood flow because the coldness slows down the blood in that area. And that causes tissue to die. So what we're going to do is increase the blood supply to the uterus. Increase it with nourishment, with healthy things. Let me just go over one more uh, example here. Uh, I just don't want you to lose track of what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the uterus and the vagina. I was talking about the area here, the muscles that contract and vibrate. Uh, move this up something for you. The muscles that contract here and vibrate. Sometimes the bacteria, fungus, and yeast that live in the uterus and live in the eyes and live all over the body because you can't function without bacteria and yeast as you call it and fungus. This population gets out of control. Sometimes if you feed it too much dead things like white sugar, bleached white flour, then what grows on dead things? Mushrooms, fungus. So the fungus starts growing on this dead stuff. And that fungus-like infection is called a yeast infection. So now you have to get off of all the white sugar, all the bleached white flour, because remember, they were on food anyway. They process bowel movements, synthetics. So you have to come off all that synthetic food because you're going to feed the yeast infection. Now you come off the white sugar, the bleached white flour, and you're walking around and say, what can I eat? I don't have nothing to eat. You can't eat any fermented food, acidic acid, vinegar, any alcohol, any wine, or any beer. They're not food anyway. So now you're stuck with eating food and walk around and say, what can I eat? You can eat food because those things I talked about are synthetics. We have these broad ligaments here. We have the uterus here. Understand that orgasm is not just a sensation derived from the, this, the stimulation of the labia minoria, labia majora, and clitoris. Orgasm in women occur with the rocking motion of the uterus and of these ligaments of the pelvic girdle itself. It gets into a rocking motion. And this rocking motion stimulates what we call an orgasm. But the Europeans cut all that out and give you what is called a hysterectomy. It's a money-making thing here. Now I'm going to move on and go to um, some of the things that are used to treat various conditions of the uterus. The endometriosis, as I mentioned, is treated with burdock and saw palmetto, which is good for the fallopian tubes, by the way, and fever fuel, which is used to reduce the temperature. So I'm dropping the temperature of the uterus, which is where you get this endometriosis and itis, all itis means inflammation, tonsillitis, appendicitis, all that means inflammation. So I'm dropping the temperature of the uterus so the nutrients can get in. The white willow is primarily used for pain. That's under endometriosis where I'm at, I'm down to white willow. Comfrey is a herb that uh, has what they call allotone in it, which is good for healing. So I'm using comfrey. I'm using ginseng. They like Siberian ginseng, but all ginseng basically will do just the same as stabilize the energy level. And there you have mullen under ginseng, which is good for mucosal membrane, mucous membrane tissue. Helps keep it nourished. Remember the things that attack the mucous membrane attaches the mucosal tissue all over. That's why antihistamines, cough suppressants, all stop the correct flow of nutrients in and out of the uterus. 
because it stops the suppression and suppresses fluids in the uterus. It says it's a cough suppressant. It suppresses mucus flow in the uterus. Now the, u the uterus can't secrete waste out because you have suppressed it with a cough suppressant, anti-deodorant, whatever you call those things. All those things stop the fluid all over the body, brain, eyes, everywhere. So the person has to come off of those kind of things, the synthetic deodorant, the antiperspirants, the deodorized soap, all these things that keep waste in when your body's trying to throw waste out. That's why we're using the mullein, because that works on the mucosal membrane tissue and helps it to get back its vitality to nourish the system. And primrose primarily is used for what people call the uh, PMS and pain, but actually it stimulates the pineal gland. It's good for the pineal gland which has to be in the process so the treatment wouldn't hold. If you don't use primrose, then use any herb such as ginkgo or goda cola or rosemary or St. John's warp that helps increase the blood supply to the pineal gland and cause the treatment regimen that you're taking to hold. Then we have dung which is uh, in the angelica family and red.